Hello, everyone. For today's encouragement, I'm going to take you to Psalm 1. And if I had to title this psalm, it would be, If You Know What's Good For You. Psalm 1 talks about instruction on how to be blessed. The Hebrew word for blessing can be translated fortunate or happy. And if we are going to be blessed or fortunate or happy, there are things that we need to do or not do. Blessing doesn't just happen. It's because we follow particular counsel. Of the things that we are not to do, this psalm tells us that blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. Wicked is a word that we associate with clear anti-God rhetoric marked by witches who are easily recognized. You know, the witches are the ones with the missing teeth and the pointed hats and the black dresses who run around on brooms. Clearly, we know we should not be listening to them. But witches are not so easily marked. Wicked is not so easily seen. This is Satan talking. That usually isn't what we hear. Or, I'm an atheist and I'm advising you. That's not usually what atheists say. If it were that obvious, we would turn a deaf ear, but it is not that obvious. Most of the wicked counsel we get is very subtle. It comes through advertisements that come our way that we're used to or entertained by. Have it your way, we hear. Wicked counsel that goes that way tells us that we can't be happy unless we have a Peloton or a trip to Disney World. There's no contentment without a new car. Well, that's wicked counsel. We know better. But the reality is, if we don't think about that as wicked counsel, we make it a part of our lives and a part of our thinking, and we find ourselves far from being blessed. A blessed man is one who discerns wicked counsel and decides to turn a deaf ear toward. That's number one. Secondly, a blessed man is something who does not stand in the way of sinners. That's what the psalm says. This simply means that this man recognizes the value and the behavior of people who have missed the mark, who are not seriously following after the Lord. Their values are different from God's values. Their priorities are different from God's priorities. And the blessed man is the one who recognizes those who are not following after the Lord and simply does not stand around and take it, listen to it, or embrace it. That's the second way of getting blessed. Thirdly, a blessed man is one who does not sit in the seat of mockers. That's what the psalmist says. These mockers are people who have rejected the clear counsel of the word of God. Not only that, but they make fun of those who are following the clear counsel of God. Mockers seek to fortify themselves in their own thinking by openly deriding godly counsel. Since we know that birds of a feather flock together, mockers often gather together. And the text here tells us that we are blessed if we do not sit down and begin enjoying the counsel and the revelry of mockers. This may be the hardest one of the three to avoid. Refusing to sit with them may very well make us an object of their scorn or their mocking. Yet these are three things that a, mo a person must do if he is going to be blessed of the Lord. The very next verse tells us that what we do need to do intentionally, verse 2, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on this law he meditates day and night. According to John Stott, this law is the Torah, and it refers not just to the Ten Commandments or even to all the rules and regulations of the law of Moses, but to all God's revelation as the guide of life, which, although given through Moses and the prophets, is the law of the Lord. It is the word of God. We are told to meditate on the law of the Lord, the word of the Lord, and continue to think about it. That's what meditation does. The instruction is not so much that we need to meditate, but what it is that we need to meditate on. We all find it very easy to meditate on things that people have said that have hurt us, or on news that we're waiting to hear that we fear might be bad, or meditate on the things that have already happened that are horrible. Oh, a person who meditates on those things is certainly not going to find blessing. But the person who decides, I'm going to meditate on the law of the Lord, on the principles and the precepts, and think about what this means or how it applies to my life, that is the one, that is the man who is going to find blessing. The promise is in verse 3, He is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither 
whatever he does prospers. As many of you know, I grew up on a farm. I've often watched a cow chewing their cud. A cow, you may know, has four stomachs, and the food that is chewed is passed from one stomach to another. I've often watched a cow chewing its cud, and I invite you to do the same. There's simply a cow very contentedly chewing away, chewing away, and he will stop chewing and swallow. If you look carefully, you can follow the cud, find its way down the cow's neck. A little lump is there. In a moment, the cow will burp. And in that burp, you can watch the cud find its way up the cow's neck. I invite you to follow that and do that someday. It's very entertaining. And it's a way that a cow, it gives us an example of what meditation is. To chew on it over and over and over again. Swallow it and burp it up and chew on it again and again. The Bible tells us here in Psalm 1 that the man who meditates on the law of the Lord day and night is the one who is blessed. We're blessed because we avoid things, and we are blessed because we do certain things. You will find blessing if you follow these instructions of Psalm 1. May the Lord encourage you this day to do so.